Good time of day, guys! My name is Godzi, and welcome back to another episode of Wonderful Every Day. Last episode, we made it to the end of Jabberwocky as Tomasane had his final battle with Takuji and died. So, great. Uh, sorry for not uh, uploading this the past couple days. I took a break for two days from recording. So, yeah. <laughs> And so this episode, we're going to be starting the next chapter, which dreamed it. So let's see what this is all about. 6.373, the world is independent of my will. 6.374, even if everything we wished were to happen, this would only be, so to speak, a favor of fate. For there is no logical connection, I guess. Between will and world. Okay. <laughs> Missed one line there. I'm assuming that's the citation there. This game seems to like citing uh, other works often. Which is neat. <laughs> Alright. I wonder how long it's been since my twin brother died. Excuse me? Time has stopped for me since that day. That's why I still carry around that doll. Doll. Oh. So, Hasaki. Hasaki had a twin? A twin brother? If only I was a shadow, and that doll was the real me. I thought that would be nice. Oh! No, that would make some sense. Then? Huh, wow, already an answer. <laughs> okay, so assuming that this is Hasaki, and the doll is the rabbit doll, that would mean Hasaki had a twin brother at one point. And that would explain why Takuji views Hasaki and her rabbit doll as a pair of twins. As for why the twins are both female? Eh, who knows. But, still. There's that, I guess. If only I could disappear. Those two saved me. One of them was Yuki-san. Okay, she came back to me. She brought Tomoni-san with her. And they came back to me. Yeah, this is definitely Hasaki's perspective. Minakami Yuki-san, a kind older sister. Tomoni-san loved her. Hi. <laughs> Toa, you're here awfully early. Oh, good morning. How was he today? It was Tomoni-san this morning. What day is it? Oh, so it was Tomosane this time. Yes, and he was as cold as ever. I figured as much. He's always been like that, though. Yes, he's always like that. Oh, I wonder if he'll ever get better. <laughs> if he went to the hospital. It's not a sickness that he has. That's why Yuki came. She came to save Tomosane. Master. A curse. That's a curse. There's no way that's just PTSD or anything like that. He was the best student I had. He had a strong heart. He wouldn't leave you behind just because of something like that. He wouldn't just run away. A curse, is it? That's why Yuki came to him. Because she can fight alongside him. Against the curse? That's the curse of the Shrine Maiden in the town of the Walking Dead. The curse of the Savior. The two of them should be able to beat it together, though. Huh. Okay, Savior. So, the curse of the savior. Interesting. Okay. A curse. The curse of the town of the walking dead. The people in Sawaimura, especially the people of the Mamiya Dojo, believe in that. The, the doctors call it post-traumatic stress disorder. They say it's trauma caused by that incident. That's the reason Nissan went mad. Whether it's the curse of a dead boy, or PTSD. A dead boy? I don't know what the truth is. So, okay, your twin brother is dead, then. Okay. But I have one hope. Tamanisan will come back, right? Come back? I'm very confused already. Of course! If he doesn't, I'll have to give God a good punch right in the nose when I meet him. <laughs> okay. Huh. God. God. 
who created the world in six days, and rested on the seventh day. Why didn't he use that day to rid the world of all pain and suffering? Why did he give my brother such a cruel fate? Is she talking about Takuji, or... Which dreamed it? Or her twin? Hmm. Okay. Which streamed it July 15th. Okay, oh. Is that CG Tomosane playing the piano? We're already on the 15th. Okay, so that explains why she's saying, Will Tomosane come back to us, I guess. How long has it been since Tomo Nissan disappeared? The last time I saw him was the day before yesterday. I should have been more selfish back then. Every time he leaves, I never know if I'll ever see him again. <sighs> I came to Kita High again. I was hoping to meet Tomo Nissan again. But the Nissan I saw at school was Takuji Nissan, and then later there was a Yuki-san that I didn't know. They all look the same, but they're different people. I've heard that humans are creatures of habit. Whether it's good or bad, if it happens every day, it just becomes normal. Maybe that's why, even if I didn't have any reason, I had a feeling that someday he would go back to normal. <laughs> There's no guarantee of that. Sometimes I even thought he could stay with me forever. I'm not a student here, so he told me not to come to school too much. Well, here goes. If I do something Tomo Nissan told me not to, maybe I'll be able to see him. Maybe it's silly of me to think that. Yuki-san bought lunch at the store, so I didn't have anything to deliver. I don't have any real reason to be here. What am I doing? I hugged my rabbit. Its head slumped to the side when I squeezed it. The stall was larger than I was when I got it from Nissan, but now it's so small. So, sometimes I feel like I'm still as small as I was when I got it. I feel like I'm just one of the rabbit's dreams. Like the life I'm living now is just a dream I had when I was a child. Huh. Even I know that's just one of my delusions, so. Oh. Okay. <laughs> but knowledge and emotion don't always agree. With its inclined head, the rabbit looked like it was asking me a question. But I couldn't hear its voice. Even though it always listened to me. Huh? What, is someone there? Oh. It was just a quiet sound. It was almost inaudible. It was more like a disturbance in the air. Ah! Oh. oh, hi. Huh? Who are you? Oh. You met Kimura on the 15th? What? Then, okay. Huh. I thought you would have already had known him. Okay. Oh, uh, well, uh... That's a big camera. Oh, uh, I'm a landscape photographer. Oh, is that so? Um, well then. Ha! Ah! Huh? Ah! Oh, what? You were taking pictures, weren't you? Oh, ow! Oh, you're a martial artist too? What kind of siblings are you? Oh. <laughs> Me too? What does that mean? Ow, oh, ow! Oh, you're gonna break it! Were you taking pictures of Tomo Nissan? Uh, Tomo Nissan? No, uh, I mean Takuji Nissan. <laughs> Why would you think I was taking pictures of your brother? Ow, ow! You know, I heard you mention siblings. I'm not gonna let you go now. Eek, sorry, uh, could you loosen your grip a little? No, you're following Nissan around, aren't you? Maybe I should break one of your arms just to be safe? No. <laughs> Wait, you're scaring me! Why are you following Nissan? Um, well, I'm a landscape photographer, so... Ah, ow, ow! If I push a few more centimeters, I'm sure you know what'll happen to your arm. You're a lot scarier than you look. You really are, Takuji-kun's sister. You can stop wasting your breath. Tell me why you're following Nissan. Um, at first I was investigating the drug problem in today's youth. A drug problem? Yeah, lots of college students grow pot nowadays. My client wanted me to gather material about that. What does that have to do with my brother? Well, he's famous around here. His name came up a lot when I was investigating around here. 
Why would his name come up? He extorts people and takes their drugs. All the drug dealers around here have noticed him. Even the Yakuza have their hands in drugs, you know? And they're being targeted by some random guy off the street. What did he do? Uh, like I said, he takes drugs away from people. Huh? So he's doing drugs? <laughs> At first, that's what I thought too. I was sure he was a junkie that needed to feed his habits. But after a while, I noticed it was way more than any one person could ever use. I thought maybe he was selling it. So I tailed him for a while. It would have made a great article if I had found him stealing drugs from other people and reselling them. So, was he? I was way off the mark. He wasn't selling it at all. He threw them all away. Oh. Yeah. Why does he do that? It's so dangerous and there's no real reason for him to do it. So I investigated, and I found out about Mamiya Takuji's past. And I found a lot of interesting stuff. The White Lotus Association. Your mother was involved with them, right? So you investigated all that too? Yeah. I was reading old news articles about the White Lotus Association, and it said your mother was involved with the cult founder. You're missing the most important part. Wait, why do you two both act the same way? I'm a pacifist, stop! <laughs> We're siblings. We have to protect each other. So I have to eliminate problems before they come up. No, no, wait. I don't think it's that simple. What do you mean? Well, the way you're saying it, it sounds like everyone in the world is either trying to help or hurt you. I wouldn't say that. So let's just calm down. I know this camera makes me look suspicious, but does that mean I'm trying to hurt you? Does that make me an enemy? I definitely can't think of you as an ally. I, I told you! You can't just divide the world into enemies and allies! What are you trying to say? There are lots of strange things happening in the school, and your brother is at the center of it. What? In the school? Yeah, that's right. You didn't know? In the past few days, two students from this school have died. Two students have died? Yeah, in that short time period, there have been two deaths. Has Senegawa not died yet? The first was Shiroyama Tsubasa. He was a third year student. I saw him buying and selling drugs a few times during my investigation. He liked going out at night and hanging out at clubs too. <laughs> what happened to him? He died. It was five days ago, I think. He probably had an accident while he was on drugs. He fell from the school roof. Who was the other? Takashima Zakuro. Huh? Takashima Zakuro? Yeah, she was a girl your brother knew. They were seen together several times in the days before she died. How did she die? An accident? No. Didn't you see it on the news? I don't watch TV much. It was pretty sensational, so it got a lot of airtime. Takashima and two girls from other schools jumped off an apartment building near Suginomiya Station. Two girls from another school? Does that mean it was a suicide? Who knows? There hasn't been an official announcement yet, but it definitely looks like a suicide. They're saying on TV that they probably met online and formed a suicide pact. They met online? Oh well, they weren't friends before they committed suicide. It's just an inference. But I couldn't find any posts they made on any sites about suicide. I don't think it was a suicide pact. Then what do you think it was? I'm not the only one. Some people online have noticed the same thing. Their deaths weren't just a bunch of people meeting up and committing suicide. Some people online? Yeah, we don't have any proof. But there are a lot of people sleuthing around. Sleuthing? Yeah, people on the internet have a lot of free time. And there are a bunch of people trying to figure out what happened. But they're at a dead end. There's one thing they can't investigate. What's that? There's a lot of speculation surrounding this one site. The school's underground message board. Underground message board? Yeah, well, technically it just means a message board that's not recognized by the school. Everyone's talking about it, but only people with an account can see the message board. 
Um, I don't know much about the internet, so I'm not sure what you mean. You have to get approved by the administrator just to see the message board. And the administrator is pretty strict about who can make an account. No, they aren't. <laughs> not at all. It's hard for an outsider to see the site at all. And anyone who looks suspicious can get banned in a second. Sometimes people get in and they copy-paste threads onto other forums or post screenshots. Um, I don't know what those words mean. Oh, sorry, that's just net slang. Anyway, a lot of people on the internet are paying attention. This could turn into a major incident. A major incident? Yeah, Kitahai Suryama Tsubasa, and then Takashima Zokuro, Sukigawa Usami from Ebisugawa High, and Mizuo Ayumi from Senogawa Girls all died. And some people think this might just be the beginning. The beginning? You mean... And your brother is at the center of it all. Huh. Do you know about the prophecy that's supposed to be fulfilled this year? Ah. The world's final day will come, and everything will return to the sky. Apparently, the date carved in Mayan ruins corresponded to the year 2012, though that's supposed to be in December. But several people predicted the world would end on July 20th. One of those people is the founder of the White Lotus Association. But the founder retracted his statement. He said he had caused a miracle and avoided the disaster. <laughs> you know all about this, huh? The founder of the White Lotus Association has retracted his statement. But that was seven years ago. There are still people who believe in the prophecy. What are you trying to say? Your mother, or should I say, your former mother... I heard she got divorced. Her maiden name was Sanami, I believe. Former mother. <laughs> she didn't get divorced. Our father died. Her name is still Mami Akotomi. Oh, is it now? But your mother still believes. There's another site on the internet that's been getting a lot of attention. The website my mother made, right? Yes, the predictions of the WebBot project. It still says that the world will end on July 20th, 2012. The White Lotus Association denies the prophecy, but she still believes the world is going to end. <sighs> you sure did do a good job finding all that out. Oh, oh! Wait, even if you beat me up, someone else will find out the truth soon. It's not just people online, there are other journalists asking around. If anything else happens, the police will probably start investigating too. The mistress of the White Lotus Association's founder is running the WebBot project. And her son, Mami Atakuji, is likely at the center of the latest incidents. Gah! Huh? Oh. <laughs> Hi. Jeez, the mass media sure is garbage. Master! Don't worry, I didn't kill him. I just put him to sleep. Let's bring him back to the shop instead of talking here. Sh sure Master picked up the self-proclaimed journalist and carried him on his back. T so, who is this? Oh, he didn't know Master either? What the fuck? So he was literally just... a lone wolf. Until... he ran into Tomosane. He didn't have connections to Master or Hasaki? Seriously? That's actually surprising. He's a journalist, apparently. A journalist, huh? Well, what should we do with him? We're always- You're always sexually harassing Tomonisan, so why don't you fulfill your urges with this guy? Huh? Huh? Wait, what do you mean by that? Exactly what I said. Master woke him up once we got to the store. It's amazing how he's always perfectly in control of the situation. Hmm, he's not really my type, but... I do like virgin boys. <laughs> no, wait, I'm not a virgin. Though I've only done it with prostitutes. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I was talking about your anal virginity. I love showing little straight boys how to walk on the wild side. Whoa, wait! They stuck my fingers, their fingers in my ass. Great. So I'm not a virgin there either. <laughs> a girl's fingers can't take away your virginity. You have to get a real man to stick something nice and juicy up there. This conversation is fucking stupid. Eek! 
um, that's really nasty. Oh, sorry about that. So you're a journalist, Kimura-san? Huh? How do you know my name? Not just that, I know your address and phone number too. I searched all your stuff. N no way! <laughs> Not like I really care, but why the heck are you toting around this huge camera? You must stand out with this thing. He does. Uh, don't touch that! I just got it fixed! Hmm, so back to our conversation earlier. What do you mean? You said there were lots of people talking about the incidents at Kita High. Well, yeah, a lot of crazy stuff went down. Crazy stuff, huh? He said two people that Nissan knew have died. And Mom's site. Well, I thought that site hadn't been updated in ages. Yeah, she's just been sitting in front of the computer every day since then. I don't think the site has been updated. How long has it been? There are lots of rumors going around that the site hasn't been updated for a while. Why are there rumors about that? Well, the site looks like it's operating automatically, and apparently the predictions actually come true. Really? No, I wonder. I think it uses a program. What? So it uses a program to predict the future? I wouldn't really say it predicts the future. Does that mean the program is writing those predictions? Well, according to Yuki-san, it takes trending keywords on the internet and uses those to write the predictions. Huh? What do you mean? It's writing predictions for things that have already happened. What good is that? It's in beta right now. All I can do right now is take popular keywords and post them as predictions. How can you call that a prediction? Um, from what I've heard, the time required to post the predictions will grow shorter and shorter, and ultimately it will be able to post the predictions before anyone else on the internet mentions it. That's ridiculous! <laughs> really? At first it took several days to post a prediction, but now it can post them within seconds. That's why she said it would overtake the future soon. It won't, though. <laughs> Don't you think it's pretty impressive, though? Yeah, Yuki-san spent a lot of time on it when she was bored. Apparently it's really close to overtaking the future. I told you, that's not the problem here! I started researching the WebBot project on the internet, and it's supposed to be way more than just that. Yeah, Yuki-san said something like that. She said occult stuff like the WebBot project was impossible. She said it wasn't a problem of just improving the system, but that the theory itself is flawed. That's why she said it was just a superstition. So this conversation she's talking about that she had with Yuki, that was the one where Yuki went to the apartment, right? Back in Down the Rabbit Hole 2, the part where Hasaki was first introduced? Hmm. I don't really remember a lot from that conversation. That was like, this is what, episode 45 of the Let's Play? And that was like episode 9, so. <laughs> oh, that just sounds like Yuki, all right. She says it's impossible, but she was still too curious to pass up a chance to play around with it. So that means Yuki is part of the problem here. <laughs> I guess so. Maybe we should delete the page. No, I don't think you should. If you do, the only thing left behind will be the rumors about its predictions coming true. If it's just making predictions after the fact, people will figure it out eventually. I guess so. If we delete it, we won't have any proof that it's fake. That's true. On the internet, it just takes one piece of decisive evidence to, pr to prove something true or false, but... If there's no way to prove it either way, people will speculate about it for years. Of course. Most people on the internet are just curious. It's not like they actually believe in prophecies, but still... The WebBot Project hasn't... Website. The WebBot Project website hasn't changed at all in the past few days. Rather, the rumors on the internet right now are all about the WebBot Project's past predictions. If the system's predictions are what people are talking about on the internet, then... There's no need to make a new prediction. Though that'll change once something new crops, crops up. Putting that aside, what do you mean by a cult? I don't really know anything about that stuff. Well, that's... Oh god. Huh? No way! But... What? What just happened? 
What? You must have made some crap up, old man. The occult isn't the kind of thing that would make a girl blush. <laughs> Jeez, how can you tell? Maybe I should fix that dumb mouth of yours for good. No, no, don't mind me. <laughs> Either way, Yuki-san said that the system can't make a prediction right now. <laughs> Great bet, guys. <laughs> Very short one, but still. <laughs> but still, I'm really amazed that no one's figured it out. Though I have to say, I'm kind of skeptical that I could make those predictions in just a few seconds. So what kind of rumors have there been about Kita High lately? The WebBot project was has designated July 20th of this year as the date of a tragedy. It said those girls committed suicide in order to escape the disaster. They committed suicide in order to escape? If they were so afraid of dying, why would they commit suicide? <laughs> Don't ask me. I just heard that those girls claimed the world would end on July 20th just before they committed suicide. Oh, so she... Did you know the girl who committed suicide, Hasuki-chan? Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. I just met her once when I was with Tomoni-san and Yuki-san. You keep mentioning him, but who is Tomoni-san? Shut up, would you? You're not in a position to be asking questions. I thought Takuji-kun was your only brother. <laughs> Takuji-ni-san isn't my only brother. Uh, what do you mean? I told you to shut up! <laughs> so, are they talking about my brother on the internet too? Hmm, well, no one's mentioned him by name. But there are- oops. But there are definitely rumors that something big is gonna happen at Kita High. They say the ringleader is a male student from Kita High, but no outsiders have access to the underground message board. Which is the epicenter of all the rumors. So that's... Takuji Nissan. How much do they know about him? I'm not sure, but I realized it, so other people with good intuition might have noticed him too. Is it true that people on the internet can track down your address if they know your real name? I guess so. I couldn't say for sure, but it's certainly possible that they could find his address and phone number. Do you think we're fine for now? Right now, well, people are just trying to gather information without causing a fuss. But depending on what they find out, you might start getting unsolicited calls. Calls? You mean from people we don't know? Yeah, they do that on the internet sometimes. They call businesses or famous people and post the conversations online. What for? Well, I guess some of them do it to get information, but most people just do it as a form of harassment. You mean like when someone calls and immediately hangs up? Well, it's a bit different from that old prank. Usually they record the call so they can post it online. Huh, they must have a lot of free time. Most people do it to kill time after all. Hmm. They harass people just to kill time? There are an awful lot of terrible people in this country nowadays. <laughs> well, there are laws against public indignation and uh, indignation in the sort. But we don't have a phone at our house. All we have is an internet connection. I think it's more common to call someone's school or work than their home. So they could do it at any time, couldn't they? They already know that he goes to Kita High, don't they? Like I said, people just seem to be investigating right now. So it's just a matter of time until they find out where the Mamiya house is. Probably. I see. Okay, Hatsuki-chan. Yes? From now on, you're staying here. Huh? But... Write down everything you need. That might be a good idea. It might get a little noisy over at your house. Yeah, so make this Kimura guy run and get whatever you need from the house. Me? That's right. I guess you don't have to. If you don't care about your camera. That's my beautiful fighting Nikon T3 camera! Oh, this camera can fight! Maybe I should use it as a weapon next time I get a chance. Wait, that's my heart and soul! <laughs> then I'll tear your heart out. You know, they used to call my fist a 10 centimeter bomb. What? Are you some kind of mercenary boxer? <laughs> Maybe I was Yohei? What? Uh, wait, no one but old men are going to get that joke. Really, that wasn't funny at all. I'm not an old man, I'm an old woman. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're mad about? 
And that last part was a parody of Dr. Narihara. You're crazy. Cheese. Alright, references to stuff I don't get. Let's go. Dig! Uh, I'm here! What took so long? There was too much stuff. Are you moving in or what? Of course there's a lot. She's a girl, so she has to have her necessities. But why does she need the entire dresser? That's a dumb question. We can't let you touch her underwear now, can we? Ugh, so that's why. Of course. <laughs> Sorry. The room upstairs is free. No, it's not. There's only your room up there. I told you, you can have that room. What about you? I'll go sleep with my boyfriend. <laughs> it's kind of nasty hearing you say that. <laughs> um, Master, if you don't mind, I'd like to sleep in the store. No way, I can't let a girl sleep in a place like this. Really? I could sleep on the sofa in the back. What are you talking about? You'll be sore and tired when you wake up. No, I won't. It's plenty big enough for me, so I won't notice at all. And besides... What? If Tomo-Nissan or the old Yuki-san comes in, I want to be the first one to meet them. Hasuki-chan? Really, I would rather stay at home, but to be honest, it's really hard to watch Yuki-san when she treats me like that. So I really have to thank you for letting me stay here. What? You could have asked any time. Sorry, but I didn't want to be selfish. Hmm. Silly girl. Nah. Master gently embraced me. <laughs> you're the girl she gave her life to protect. So you're my daughter. And Tomosane is my son. Even now, she's protecting you both. I'm sure of that. The doctor might disagree. Maybe most people would disagree. But I believe... She's protected you before, and now she's protecting Tomosane. From all the curses, from all the ghosts. Yes. I hugged Master back. Our father died, and our mother ended up like that. Ever since, it's been Master Minakami who's been looking out for me and my brother. Okay, yeah. Maybe he's been spoiling me. I cried into Master's chest. I don't know why, I just needed to cry. Hmm. July 16th. Let's go. I couldn't tell if my eyes were open or closed. A world without light. There was light. I thought there wasn't. With, when my eyes focused, I saw that I was within a faint light. This isn't my ceiling. Ah. I jumped up and checked my surroundings. Oh, that's right. I'm okay. I've been staying here at the bar since yesterday. What time is it? I would normally be able to tell the time of day from the sun streaming in through the window, but in this darkness I couldn't tell at all. I looked at the clock. It was just after 9am. The bar's interior is always dark, even during the day. According to Master, the walls and doors are thick so that gang members can't break in. Bars where gangs would gather used to be built with unusually heavy walls and doors to protect against break-ins. But of course, that only happens in other countries. In a way, the bar is a lot safer than the house. When the doors are locked, no one can come in, and no one can see in from outside. <sighs> huh? Did I just hear someone knock? Can't imagine any customers coming at this time of day. Are you up? Oh. I stood in front of the large door. I raised my voice a little to answer. Is that you, Kimura-san? That's me, Kimura! The demon Kimura! The journalist Esquire Kimura! What's that? There have been a lot of new happenings. I got some valuable new info. You investigated some more? Yeah, I haven't slept at all. Isn't that amazing? Let me in! What should I do? Master told me not to let anyone in until he got back, but... Well, okay... Good morning, Hasuki-chan! You're awfully chipper. That's because I haven't slept. Oh, can I have a beer? Whiskey, please! We're not open yet. I reluctantly stood at the counter, even though I usually work back in the kitchen. Have you eaten yet? Nope! Can you cook, Hasuki-chan? 
Well, the only cooking I've done is here at the bar. Yay! What do you want? This is the menu. Let's see. Pickled celery, a penne al arabiata, a margarita pizza, and... Um, we're out of celery. We haven't restocked yet. Then a whiskey! Aged 1,000 years! We don't have any whiskey like that. Ten years then. <laughs> You're a good cook, Hasuk chan It tastes great. Let me guess, he's drunk. Thank you. Oh, and I need a refill. A Glen Farclaws from the year one billion. Are you okay? You're bright red. Have I fallen for you? Jeez. <laughs> Did your heart skip a beat? Are you intoxicated with my adult charm? I think you're the one who's intoxicated. Oh, behind you. Behind me? Oh. <laughs> Why did you let Kimura in? Why did you spin him? He said he found some new information. Don't let him fool you like that. You're so careless. Um. What are you doing? Are you looking for something? Huh? I'm taking the money out of his wallet before I throw him out. You can't rip people off like that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> wow. Look, no progress. You didn't throw him out. Good job. <laughs> so what's this new information you were talking about? It's amazing. You'll understand what a great journalist I am now. <laughs> oh, you don't have to convince me. You're a perfect example of mass media scum. Truly, you are a real journalist, and that's not a compliment. <laughs> that's right. I'm a true journalist. Don't you agree? Yeah, I got it. Now, what's this new information? Well, I was looking around online, and there were posts saying something was happening around the station in Suginomiya. So I went out to Suginomiya. And? Suginomiya is where that girl committed suicide, so I stood watch at that apartment building. And I saw two girls there. Oh. Hmm. And? They picked something up and took it home. Oh, Megumi and Satoko. Okay, right. That was that new information! First of all, those two girls were Kita High students. But why should we care about this amazing new information of yours? Those two girls are Akasaka Megu and Kitami Satoko. And? Those two were the students who were bullying the girl who committed suicide, Takashima Zakuro. What proof do you have of that? Well, I was originally investigating the proliferation of illegal drugs. Several Kita High students' names came up. These two girls came up in my investigations more than once, so I already investigated them. There was an incident in the past which could have resulted from bullying on Kita High's Building C. Hmm, what does that mean? Amazing! Oh, what is? <laughs> I'm amazing for finding all this out. You're not amazing, you don't know anything. What are you talking about? You can't solve a mystery in one day, it takes time! Then tell us when you've solved it all. We don't care if you found a new clue. <laughs> but it was really hard to gather all this information. But that's your job. <laughs> it's my job, but I haven't slept at all. I'm working 24 hours overtime. You're proud because you're not getting any sleep? Are you stupid? You're not gonna get laid if you keep talking like that, you know? <laughs> what does that have to do with it? Everyone knows that it's just annoying if you tell them about how little sleep you get. Popular guys don't talk about that stuff. I'm an exception! What kind of exception would that be? Do you have a girlfriend, Kimura-san? <laughs> I've decided to preserve my chastity until we start dating, Hasuke-chan. Gross, get out. That hurt. You're over 30 and you're still a virgin. Why? I'm such a perfect, nice, hard-working, funny guy! Then how did you stay a virgin this long? That's because... I was waiting for the moment I met you, Hasuki-chan. Gross, punch him again. Don't give her that romantic spiel. I know you go to the titty bars in town. <laughs> um, Master, please don't hit me every time I say something. I was just making a joke. Your face didn't look like you were joking. You're so cruel. <laughs> What do you think, Hasuki-chan? About what? About me! About my humor! <laughs> um, you're a lot of trouble. 
Huh? How so? <laughs> no, uh, I guess I get kind of tired of hearing you make bad jokes over and over. <laughs> really? I guess you're right. I always go overboard trying to make people laugh, you know? <laughs> you really shouldn't. So, what do you think of me as a man? Uh, I think you're a lot of trouble. <laughs> no, I know that I'm a lot of trouble. I'm always getting into trouble. <laughs> I think you have a different definition of trouble than the rest of us. <laughs> Doesn't that mean that I'm amazing? So, what else do you think of me? Don't you like me? I don't know you well enough for that. <laughs> then maybe we can get to know each other better. No way. hasuki chan already likes someone else. Huh? What? Really? Who is it? About that. Wait! Oh, that's right! You need to go to the store, Master! Quick! Oh, I can do that later tonight. Um, you know, Kimura-san! Huh? What? We're closed! Go home! <laughs> we haven't even opened yet. That's right, so get out! Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Great bet, guys. This chapter so far has really gone up and down with like serious comedy, serious comedy, and quickly too. Like I'm getting whiplash kinda. Master! <laughs> sorry, sorry. Oh no wait, that was angry, not hello. <laughs> Jeez, don't say weird stuff like that! Oh, it was just a joke. Oh, is there someone you re is there really someone you like? Not at all. I'm going to the store. Oh, but the store isn't. I'll be back soon. <laughs> all right. <sighs> Why does this all have to happen right in the morning? <sighs> I looked at the clock. It was just before 11. I said I was going to the store, but then I realized that the store wouldn't open till noon. What should I do? I brought the shop's wallet with me too. If I went back without buying anything, I would just look dumb. Ah, <sighs> oh, well. I haven't gone to see her in a few days. Maybe I should check in on her. Oh. Oh, the apartment building, all right. White Lotus Apartments. I didn't really want to come here. My other relatives have even told me to stay away from her. But I come to the apartment here every few days. The person who abandoned me. The person who denied my existence. That's who lives here. So, I won't abandon her. And of course, that's not because I love her or even because I'm a philanthropist. The person who abandoned me. If I abandoned her after she became powerless, I would be no different. I hate her. But her blood runs through my veins. And I don't want to do the same thing she did. I won't abandon her. She abandoned me, but I won't abandon her. Because... Tamo Nissan was the same way. Tomo Nissan hated our mother more than anyone. He tried to protect me. But even Tomo Nissan can and truly hate her in the end. He couldn't throw her away. Really? Is this actually all true? I don't think Tomo-sane ever brought her up. Like, <laughs> that's how she ended up like this. And even now. <laughs> You're such a coward, Tomo Nissan. You always said you were gonna kill her, but in the end, you could never do it. What? If you couldn't do it, then how could I? Tomonisan. Hmm? Who's Tomonisan? Oh, great. <laughs> huh? Ah! Is that Tomonisan guy the person you like? Does one of your friends have a cute big brother? Does that mean you really do like older guys? Why are you here? Because I was worried. I chased after you. You mean you followed me? Come on! Who knows what could happen, right? A weak young girl like you needs a big, strong bodyguard like me. Oh, really? So you'll be my bodyguard, huh? Of course. Hold out your hand. Huh? What? You want to hold hands? Or can you read palms? I grabbed his hand. <laughs> now, try to escape. Oh, I can't! It hurts! Let me go! <laughs> I sighed and let his arm go. If you can't even escape a weak, young girl's arm lock, I don't think you can protect me. No, I'm the cultured type of guy. I'm not all that strong or good at sports, but I'm really good at other things, like not sleeping. <sighs> <sighs> I wonder what his problem is. I looked at Kimura-san's face once more. He had a huge grin on his face. 
but I guess he's not a bad person. And he gives us the information he finds. Must have been hard to get all that info. Part of it is just because he wants to get information from us, I'm sure. Still, he always tells us everything, even if he doesn't have to. Even now, he could have just followed me instead of showing his face. And more than anything, Master seems to be pretty fond of you, doesn't he? Master? What? No, I'm not into guys. I only have eyes for you, Hasuki-chan. Is he even listening to what I'm saying? Or maybe he just doesn't understand what he's hearing. But wouldn't it be a problem if a reporter was so bad at listening? <sighs> anyway, please don't follow me like that. <laughs> uh, sorry. <sighs> well, now that you came out this way, do you remember that webbot project I told you about last night? Do you want to see it? Huh? Here? Yes, this is my mother's apartment. Oh, wow. The name is exactly the same. Yes, but the White Lotus Association tells her not to use their name. They even sent us a cease and desist order. Oh, then she's not related to the White Lotus Association? Not at all. There's only the name left. Now, only my mother lives here. And the only person who ever comes to see her is the home helper. But you come to see her too. I am her daughter, unfortunately. Go ahead. Haha, <laughs> thank you. Hmm. Whoa. Oh, that's my mother. Oh, you're Hasuki-chan's mom? Uh, my name is Kimura. That's pointless. No matter what you say to her, she can't hear you. She can't hear me? Yes. Kimura-san looked into my mother's face. Even when a complete stranger was staring her in the face, she didn't react at all. Kimura continued his bizarre performance in front of my mother for a few seconds before he was finally convinced. She's been like this for over seven years now. Seven years? Do you want some tea, Kimura-san? No, oh, you don't have to do that for me. Um, do you want cold oolong tea or warm green tea? Um, uh, whichever one's easier for you. Are you taking notes? Yeah, sorta. So then, what exactly happened seven years ago? I can't tell you that. Huh? Why? You're taking notes because you want to write an article about this, right? Not at all. I would consider your family's circumstances before doing that. Either way, I don't want to talk about it. Go investigate it yourself if you really want to know. <laughs> That's a bit harsh. Well, I don't blame you. <laughs> Kimura-san. It was Nissan. It was Takuji Nissan you were investigating, right? Yeah, at first, I was just following the leads, but he caught my interest after his name kept popping, popping up. What did you think of him? What do you mean? Don't answer my question with another question, just answer the question. <laughs> <clears throat> well, it's hard to sum it up in a single, qu single sentence. I talked to him quite a few times, and he broke my camera twice. Uh, to be honest, it doesn't feel like he's really a central figure in the recent events. Or rather, I don't want to believe he's involved in all this. Maybe that's it? The mummy of Takuji I met was certainly violent and even a bit ruthless, but... But? Does anyone ever come to visit this apartment? Huh? No, not really. What does that have to do with that? The floor was vibrating just now. I think someone's coming up the steps. Oh? You heard someone? Kimura pointed to a strange machine. It was a small machine with a cord that reached the floor. What's that? A vibration monitor. Normally it's used to check for broken parts in machines, but you can use it to tell when someone comes into a building by watching the readout. It's that sensitive? Well, it depends on the construction of the house too, but in a steel frame apartment building like this, it's pretty accurate. That's awfully convenient, isn't it? Let me ask you again. Do people ever come to visit here? A maid comes to clean the apartment once a day, but... What time is that? That's during the evening. Are you expecting visitors at this time of day? No. Who could it be? Relatives, maybe? But I think they would be working today, since it's a weekday. Maybe someone else in the industry is trailing me. Or maybe it's a snake who tracked us down online? What should we do? I'll go check. You can't do that! How would I explain that if it was one of my relatives? What if it's someone dangerous? Would you be able to do anything? Of course. For your sake, I'll make the impossible possible. 
Okay, Kaito. Please just hide. Huh? Why? Isn't this the part where we kiss? It'd be dangerous if you went out, no matter who it is. So please just hide. Here, take this knife. Whoa, is this a sashimi knife? I'm pretty sure the tip will break off if you stab someone with one of these. Just go hide already, I'm going out. Whoa, wait! Hmm. I pushed him into the closet. Hmm. I guess this is when Yuki appears here, huh? Now, what's happening outside? I peered through the people and looked out. Whoever it was, they weren't standing outside the door. I didn't see anyone out there. And besides, I'm not sure if Kimura-san was right about someone coming up the stairs. I locked the door with the chain and then opened it a little bit so I could see outside. Huh? I unlocked the door right away. Mm, yep. Ah. Nissan was standing outside. Only Tomo Nissan and the first Yuki-san knew about the White Lotus apartments, which meant it had to be one of those two. Um, why are you here? I was too happy to say anything else, but then I recovered my composure. There was no guarantee that the person before me was actually who I thought it was. I closed the door right away, almost immediately. Sorry, I'm not a burglar or anything. Uh, who are you right now? Huh? Who are you? Um, my name is Minakami, you see. Minakami Yuki. Yuki-san. But the way she's talking, this isn't the same Yuki-san. This Yuki-san doesn't know who I am. That's interesting, though. It doesn't make her say Mamiya. But I heard that the other Yuki-san had replaced me with two characters called Kagami and Tsukasa. That Yuki-san shouldn't see me for who I am. What's going on? <laughs> Minakami Yuki? You're the Minakami Yuki from Kita High, right? Yes. Wait, how did you know? I knew it. This isn't the same Yuki-san I know. Then why doesn't she think I'm the twin sisters? Um, what did you come here for, Yuki-san? Oh, nothing. Um... I was at a loss for words. If nothing else, I could be sure this wasn't the same Yuki-san I knew. Do you want to come in? Huh? Do you want to come in? To the house? Mom and Kimura-san were inside. Kimura-san was hiding, so he shouldn't be a problem. There was no need to hide my mother. Maybe I could even tell what sort of person this Yuki is from her reaction when she sees her. Well, I guess, if I wouldn't be a bother. You won't be. She stepped into the apartment. Tomo Nissan always scowled when he stepped into this apartment. And then he would always look at our mother from afar. For some reason, Yuki-san would always pat me on the head after she saw my mother there. How will this person react? What would you like to drink? No, oh, don't worry about me. Does Oolong tea sound fine? Oh, sure. <laughs> I made some Oolong tea for Nissan. It was the first time I had ever needed to act so polite around my brother. Takuji Nissan couldn't see me. Tomo Nissan and the previous Yuki-san both talked to me like a normal sibling would. But the new Yuki-san always saw me as two twin girls I've never heard of. So this was new for me. But before that, could I ask why you know my name? Sorry, you're right. That was a little creepy, wasn't it? No, oh, no, that's not what I mean. My name is Mamiya Hasaki. Mamiya Hasaki? Huh? Mamiya? Yes, he's in your class. Mamiya Takuji. Takuji is my father. Oh, <laughs> huh? I couldn't tell how much she actually knew about me, so I gave her a complete ridiculous answer. I remember how I got so confused when she made this joke. <laughs> Just like Yuki-san taught me. When someone asks you a question, giving a nonsensical answer allows you to understand something about that person, such as how well they know themselves. The slower they are to react, the less they know about themselves. It's strange using a technique on Yuki-san that I originally learned from Yuki-san. <laughs> That's... It was a joke. Oh, right! Wait, a joke? Takuji is my husband. Huh? That was also a joke. No, enough with that already. Excuse me. I just thought it would help break the ice. No, well, you don't have to worry about me. Excuse me. It seemed like a joke Yuki-san would have told, but the new Yuki-san didn't find it funny. 
It was painfully clear that this wasn't the same Yuki-san I knew. Well, even new Yuki kind of has like a weird sense of humor. Like, oh, something good, something great doesn't equal tribadism. Something great equals the end of the world. Great, this girl is insane. <laughs> the truth is, I'm Mami Atakuji's little sister. Little sister? Yes. She apparently recognized me, but she didn't even know that I was his sister. His sister. I couldn't tell if this was the new Yuki-san I heard about, or yet another Yuki-san that had just been created. It was hard to tell. Huh. I heard the sound of a cup falling in the other room. My mother must have knocked over the tea I made for Kimura-san. Ah, mother. I grabbed some tissues and wiped up the oolong tea she spilled. Maybe I should have told Kimura-san to take his cup with him. It would have been kind of weird, though, seeing him with a knife in one hand and a cup of tea in the other. <laughs> I saw Yuki-san peering in from the other room. When she saw my mother, there wasn't any sign of recognition on her face. Ah, uh, excuse me. My mom just... Your mother, you said? Yes, you can probably tell by looking. Our mother is a bit... Is she sick? Yes. More importantly, why are you at this house, Yuki-san? Even Nissan doesn't come here. Oh, sorry, I only ca I came after I saw this. She showed me some pages she had printed out, and then I understood what happened. This Yuki-san must have been investigating the incidents at Kita High, and she followed the clues until she ended up here. After that, I talked with Yuki-san a lot. As I did, I gradually figured something out. She must have recognized me as Mami Atakuji's little sister when she saw me in this house, because that made her worldview consistent. Okay. <laughs> That, I guess that makes sense. It would be a problem if the twins showed up here. So at least for now, she recognized me as Mami Ahasuki. But she still saw me as a complete stranger, as Mami Atakuji's little sister. That was really sad, but I was still glad that I was able to talk to Yuki-san again. It felt like I was talking to the same old Yuki-san. She was trying to solve the problem just like the old Yuki-san would have. How ironic. She had to uncover the mystery of all these incidents being caused by someone living in the same body as her. Hmm. Sorry for taking up your time like this. Oh, no. It's not a big deal. <laughs> well, then. Um. Yes? Uh, excuse me. It's nothing. Hmm? If something's ever troubling you, please come here anytime. Sure thing. And if you meet my brother, tell him his little sister asked him to stop by once in a while. We're all waiting for him. You haven't seen your brother lately? No. It seems like I can't. That's probably part of the curse. A curse? No, it's nothing. Anyway, if I see him, I'll tell him what you said. Look, I know it might not be my place to say this, but I don't think it's anything like that. Huh? After all, Hasuki-chan, I can't imagine anyone who wouldn't want to have a cute little sister like you, so I'm sure he hasn't forgotten about you. <laughs> Um, Yuki? Yes? You have a childhood friend, right? Two of them, actually. Oh, yeah, the Wakatsuki sisters. Do you like them? Huh? What's this all of a sudden? Oh, nothing. Uh. Of course I like them. They've been my friends since we were little. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, see ya. Bye. Alright, that's kind of sweet. <laughs> I wish I could tell Yuki-san everything, but I know that would be pointless. Because the old Yuki-san that knew everything got erased, and this one replaced her. If I told this new Yuki-san everything, so she w could understand it all, the result would be the same. The new Yuki-san would be erased too. Huh. That was Mami at Takuchi, right? Yes. Hmm. I expected a barrage of questions to follow. But for some reason, Kimura-san just looked out the window with a pained expression. He must have heard us talking from inside the closet, but he didn't ask any more questions about it. All he said was, Even if something big does go down, I don't think your big brother will be to blame. That's what I think, and I'm sure you believe in him too. That's all. My conversation with Yuki must have sounded odd, but he didn't question me about it. Something big, huh? Kimura-san was trying not to intrude on our lives too much. But still, even I could feel that something big was about to happen. It seemed inevitable by that point. Which means... 
my brother is related to all this, isn't he? Kimura-san was lost for words. He didn't have any response to that. That's right, something else is going to happen soon. It's going to happen, whether I want it to or not. And I can't do anything about it. All I can do is be protected by others. I can't solve the problem. Seven years have passed. Can't I change this destiny? Are you thinking about doing something? Kimura-san suddenly looked at me and asked that. I couldn't answer. All I could do was grimace and resignation. I've fallen into your brother's clutches more than once. I couldn't believe how strong he was. He looks skinny, but it's like he can tell what you're going to do before you do it. He made me look like a helpless little kid. I was really impressed. But he's always careful that he doesn't seriously injure anyone. It hurt like hell, but he was careful not to break my bones or anything. It was, on it was only a few minutes before the pain went away. They say that strength is kindness. I agree. But today I realized that real kindness is found in dedication. Kindness is dedication? <laughs> it's kind of cliche to say that strength is kindness, but you probably haven't heard anyone say that kindness is dedication, right? I haven't. All too often, kindness is a transient thing. Showing kindness for just a moment isn't kindness at all. At best, it's pity. Transient kindness is just pity? A transient kindness doesn't involve any pain, sacrifice, or risk. It's not in just one moment, but over a great span of time, that kindness is really shown. Even if it might not benefit the person giving their kindness, they still persevere for someone else's sake. That's true kindness. Persevering for someone else's sake is true- Oh, wrong character. Persevering for someone else's sake is true kindness. It's very easy to say some kind words on cue which might make other people think you're a kind person. But those are actually the people who are least kind. Flatterers are the worst of friends. Their empty promises mean nothing when you find yourself in real trouble. Those who are willing to risk misfortune falling upon themselves to aid a friend, they're easily much kinder. When he attacked me, he could have done much worse to me, and he could have used more of his moves on me. He was careful not to leave any bruises, and above all, he treated me like a person. Not as a paparazzo or an annoying journalist, he treated me like an equal. Maybe that's not the smartest thing to do nowadays, though. Your big brother is a really nice guy. He even risked himself to get those drugs off the street. That signals absolute confidence in one's ability. Most of all, he places other people's comfort over his own. No one thanks him for what he does. He only does what he thinks is good. And it's his stubborn will that keeps him going. It's that same stubborn human human will that underlies all real kindness. A determination to see things through to the end. I don't really understand what you're trying to say. You used the same skills on me, and that's when I knew that you two really were brother and sister. Your brother is very strong, yet also very caring. You're strong and caring just like he is. You're just flattering me. I'm not strong, and I'm not a nice person, either. Yeah, that might be true. Even now, your resolve is wavering. Wavering? You're fighting against your own determination to see things through. Against my own... determination? In the past few years, since that great change seven years ago, what thoughts have you had? You've resolved to do something in that time, haven't you? Uh, how did you... No, I'm just going off my intuition. I just had a feeling. Something happened seven years ago, didn't it? It must be the reason why your mother acts like that. And now you're trying to accomplish something. Something I've tried to accomplish. You know what I mean, but your determination is wavering. This whole incident might end up being bad news for you, but it'll be worse if you don't do something about it. Worse? Yeah, you probably don't have to worry about the world actually ending, but there certainly could be a bad outcome. I've been investigating this incident. It would be a huge scoop if I could report on it. But I'd rather it didn't turn into a terrible accident. Thank you. <laughs> I guess Kimura is a alright guy, <laughs> after all. This chapter's interesting so far. Uh, we haven't really gotten any huge answers so far, other than... The fact that Hasaki has a twin brother who seems to be dead, I'm sup I'm assuming, and uh, why 
Yuki saw Hasaki as Hasaki for that conversation. So, yeah, I guess I'm gonna end things here for now. If you liked this episode, then be sure to press the like button, and if you didn't like it, then fuck you too. Remember to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all my videos and stuff. And as always, my name is Godzi, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye! Yeah.